Hi, kids. All right, so we are talking about models of the atom, and you should have already figured out why the plum pudding model is, yeah, not so good. So Rutherford came up with his model, which is kind of like the solar system model, which I wish I was wearing my NASA shirt. It's wrong on the, on the NASA symbol, which is kind of weird that they would have a wrong model on their symbol, but that's okay. Um, but, uh, and I have this over here because... Remember, this was how we came up with our de Broglie wavelength. It's going to relate to this stuff, but just remember, E equals mc squared. Momentum is mass times velocity. So then energy, if we're talking about light, is hf. Mass uh, times velocity is really going to be momentum, or sorry, mass is like momentum over speed times v squared is gonna be end up being this. And then if you do the math, well, my, my speed of light cancels out because frequency is really speed over wavelength. So the speed cancels out and you do some more math and you get, hey, you know what? If light's a particle, which we know it is, it's a wave particle, uh, then it should have momentum and lo and behold, it did. Um, and then de Broglie did this amazing algebra. It was, it was you, know, you know, groundbreaking work that he said, you know what? Well, geez, if light acts like a particle, then particles should act like waves, and particles then should have wavelengths, and you can find the wavelength of a particle by Planck's constant divided by the momentum that the, uh, that the particle has, which is pretty cool, and they've actually proved that particles do behave like waves, and they've got interference patterns with electrons, and we talked about why, you know, most big things like me the wavelength is gonna be so insanely small that I'm not gonna really show you any wave characteristics, I'm just gonna be a part of it, okay? But anyway, that's kind of a little bit of background, but uh, back to Rutherford. So Rutherford came up with his model, and it looks something like this. Here's the problem with this, and, and they knew the, this model was wrong, and it took Neil Bohr's to figure out like, why is it wrong, but essentially here they're saying that all of the positive charges concentrate in the middle, and then you have these electrons that are orbiting wrong. Solar system model. Here's the problem with this, okay? Accelerating electrons produce electromagnetic radiation. You, we know that, okay? Um, that, well, if these things are orbiting around, they are accelerating. Something moving in a circle is accelerating. You know, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction to accelerate. So it's changing direction, so it's gonna be accelerating. Well, that if, if it's accelerating, then I should be continuously giving off light which means these electrons are going to continuously lose energy, which means eventually my, this is not going to be very stable. It's going to collapse into the middle. Um, so that's one problem. The other problem is with an atom then, if I look at the light that, it's give, that it gives off, if I you know, excite the atom, if I look at the light that it gives off, I should get all the different colors. And you're going to see when you watch the hydrogen spectrum video, that's not the case. Okay. So what happened? Well, Neil Bohr's came up with this idea that, you know what, uh, the Bohr model, and he came up with this idea that, you know what, depending on the wavelength, okay, there are certain wavelengths that are going to be stable, and those all depend on, you know, the de Broglie wavelength. So if I have my nucleus here, Oh, that's not minus, that's neutral, sorry. Okay, so there's my nucleus. And let's say I'm just gonna draw something going around in a circle. Now, it's a little tricky to draw, but I'm gonna put some points here. So if I was at the fourth energy level, here's what Neil Bohr said. Neil Bohr said, well, the fourth energy level means that you are four wavelengths around, okay? and that the electron is going to be stable at these different uh, discrete, you know, dis distinct uh, energy levels. Well, if it's four wavelengths around, what I did is I put a dot here, 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 here. So I need to get a wavelength from here to here, here to here, here to here. So it's a little tricky, but I'll try to show you. So like if I was to draw it, there would be one wave. There would be another wave. There would be another wave. There would be another wave. So that... If I was actually drawing this, oops, that, that's fine. If I was drawing this energy level for n equals four, 
this is kind of what the, the, the thing would look like. So like, you know, my electron is going to be four like this. So this would be n equals four. Uh, so each energy level is going to be one of those distinct uh, way that's going to fit it around. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm going to have you watch uh, the next video, which kind of shows you a simulation with this, and hopefully it'll make more sense. All right. Bye, kids.